Uh, absolutely. This is um, uh, dramatic and surprising and historic in, in many ways. Um, we, we always see the, part, the opposite party of the president lose seats in the House and the Senate. Uh, and it just didn't, it, it, the opposite happened in the Senate this time. Yeah, it made no sense really, except what it did seem was that people were coming out and having their say, even though Georgia has these rules now that kind of limits voting as well. What does it say about those changes to the rules and also the fact that this was a, another Trump-backed candidate? Well, to me, what's most fascinating about the uh, the Georgia outcome uh, is that we know that um, that people don't vote in the U.S. if it's costly to vote, if it's made more difficult to vote, and they do vote when they're energized. Uh, and one of the things that as political scientists we're seeing is coming out of these changes in Georgia um, is efforts to make it harder to vote are energizing to um, to largely, frankly, Democratic voters, uh, and so they really have backfired in that they're making uh, they're they're exciting the electorate of the opposite party, uh, and I think that's what we saw yesterday. Yeah, interesting. So you know, to an Australian audience, 51. What's the big difference between 50? It's still a majority. How how much of a difference is that extra vote going to make? Well, there's one fact I can tell you that'll make this clear, which is that there are 11 U.S. senators over the age of 75. Um, so that means that um, uh, that in the eventuality, right, that sometime in the next two years um, we we lose one of these senators, um, that could be if you're a 50-50 Senate, that could change who is in the majority in the Senate, which changes every single uh, uh, Senate committee chair. Um, this is this is sort of a cushion for resignations, deaths, anything else that might happen uh, over the next couple of years. Yeah. All right, let's look now more at Donald Trump. His organization today found guilty of carrying out a criminal scheme to defraud tax authorities. What exactly was it found guilty of and how much is it going to impact the organization? Well, the the effect on the organization um, it, it is going to be, I think, interesting in the in the sense that the fallout is is probably going to take a while. Um, essentially, what this was is uh, the Trump organization was. Um, uh, was compensating many of its employees with uh, with non-monetary benefits, like apartments in New York City or, or um, uh, tuition for uh, for children or grandchildren in New York City, all things that that have a hefty price tag, uh, but no tax um, uh, requirements afterwards. And so this was the issue: is that these were seen as um, as avoidance of taxes, um, and so it so it could have big effects on the Trump organization and its ability to uh, to to borrow money uh, and, and continue to do some of the business that that, that it has done um, for for 50 years. Yeah, he's called it, of course, a witch hunt. And uh, no doubt many of his supporters will likely see it that way. Do you think it's going to damage his presidential chances? I, I think not, but I think that might be because you're right, it won't have much of, a, of an effect on his supporters, but his supporters really seem to be a dwindling number of the American uh, uh, populace. Uh, and so I'm not sure that this is going to be the, the piece that's going to have a big effect on a lot of, uh, of voters. Um, but it does kind of continue this steady dump, drumbeat of, of bad news for Trump. Yeah. You'd imagine, though, his calls to abolish the Constitution might affect many more voters. That's yes, absolutely. And I think um, uh, this loss in Georgia uh, for his candidate is is also not good news for him. And that's one of the things that we're seeing is that a lot of his Republican colleagues have have kind of had this to Jesus moment with him um, over the last several uh, several weeks. And we're seeing the the discussion around 
Donald Trump and the, the fear uh, that crossing him would have real effects at the in, at the polling places dissipating. And, and that means his power is dissipating as well. Yeah. The January the 6th committee has said it's ready to make criminal referrals uh, to the Department of Justice. Time is running out for them. Do we have any sense of who they're targeting? Um, not really. Um, I think what I think the the big question on everybody's mind is: Will Donald Trump make the list? Um, I, I I think there's a decent chance that he will. But I also think it's important to keep in mind that our Attorney General Merrick Garland has um, has been very clear that he does not want to come anywhere near overstepping his bounds. Um, and so a criminal referral doesn't necessarily mean an indictment. Uh, and so I, I, for, for my money, I think the likeliest solution is a criminal referral that, uh, that stops there. Yeah, indeed. Just a point to be made and, and then that's the end of it. Right. So good to talk to you. Thanks for getting up so early for us. It's been a really interesting <laughs> day. Great to chat. Thanks, yes. Kristen. Bye.